Hello, boys, and girls. Uh, today, I'm uh, I'm trying to uh, uh, reach my students that uh, would have attended in class, but since we're going virtual, uh, I'm trying to do a poster contest with all of my students. So, uh, for my these are the, the classes I I should have seen this week, but you're going to be working on this poster contest at home. This in first grade that it would be Miss Quentin and Miss Wilcox, in second grade. It would be Miss Colson's class and Miss Hodge's class, and uh, I believe Miss Burnett's class. And then in um, third grade, it's going to be Miss Moore and Miss Whitus. I think these are the classes uh, due to our, our schedule. Uh, I missed you guys last week, so I'm trying to catch you guys up uh, for this week so that you have the same opportunity that all the other students have had that attended in class. So, uh, in short, uh, we're going to do a, a, it's called the Jim Claypool Art Contest. We do this each year. Uh, each year it rotates themes, uh, but this year it's about uh, exploring Kentucky's Mighty Oaks. So what I've done is I'm breaking the video down into different parts. Uh, this video is just going to explain how the contest works and the prizes that you receive. The second video will give you information about uh, the contest, give you hopefully some fun facts about trees, something that you can um, uh, pull from and, and draw your uh, get ideas to draw your poster. Um, and then we'll sort of go from there. So let's jump into how this contest works. This contest is for every student between the grades of first grade through uh, fifth grade. But since we don't have fourth and fifth, uh, it's only for first grade through third grade. Now, if every uh, first grade through third grade turns into a poster, I'm going to end up with about 300 posters. And so what I do is I try to narrow it down to the top 10. Miss, uh, then I give it to Miss Sism and Mr. Johnson, who both used to be art teachers before they became principal and assistant principal, and they will choose who wins the, the top three for Lone Oak Elementary School. We then take the top three posters uh, that we choose for our school, then we send it to the conservation office, and their office will select who out of those three wins first, second, and third place. The prizes are... Uh, third place usually wins a t-shirt, a certificate, and $10. Second place usually receives a t-shirt, a certificate, and $15. And first place will win a certificate, uh, a t-shirt, and $25. And the first place winners are usually invited to the awards banquet. Now, an awards banquet is um, uh, they, they feed you. They feed, uh, feed everyone a really nice meal. Uh, you get to invite your whole family. I will be there. Other uh, families and first place winners uh, from other schools will be there. Uh, the conservation people and their office will be there. And then what they do is after the dinner is over, they call your name up. You accept your award. Uh, we get to see everybody else get their award. And then we have a good night. So now, the, uh, due to COVID uh, last year, uh, COVID hit Kentucky about the same time we were getting ready to have the awards banquet. So the students last year received their awards by mail. Uh, but I'm hoping uh, uh, this year uh, they always do the awards banquet in April. I'm hoping that, uh, that we actually get to have that in person. Uh, but I know for a fact that I'm going to have three students win first, second, and third place, win some prize money, win some recognition. Uh, I just We just got to do the poster. And then hopefully we'll have the awards banquet. Now, the contest doesn't end if you win first place at our school. Um, it actually moves on to what we call the county level. Uh, if you win at the county level, uh, you're going to win an additional $25 for third place an additional $50 for second place, an additional $100 for first. And so if you add what you win at the county level plus what you've had won at the school level, that could be $125 just by uh, for completing a, a, a neat drawing about Kentucky's forest. So it's, it's a pretty easy uh, gig, and, and the chances are pretty good. Um, the, I know I'm going to have some students win at our school level, but it's also we have good chances winning at the county level. Uh, 
If we also win at the county level, uh, it goes on through some regional competition and then it goes all the way up to state. State prices are going to be $50 uh, for third place, $150 for second, and $250 for first place. So if you add all that up, that's roughly close to $375 just for doing a drawing about Kentucky's trees. All right, everyone, uh, let's go over the rules real, real, real quick. Um, uh, you must be a student between the grades of 1 through 5. Uh, yes, um, uh, our school only has uh, first through third, um, but you may be competing against fourth and fifth graders uh, because if you win first place at our school, you will be competing against first place winners from uh, other schools within our county. Artwork must be created by you and you alone. Um, moms and dads can help you by maybe drawing on a separate sheet of paper, and you can look at what they draw, and you can draw it on your paper. But you can't copy, and nobody else uh, should be drawing on your paper except for you. So we want you to be creative, but we really want this to be your artwork and your artwork alone. Uh, the artwork must be 8.5 by 11, which is a pretty common size paper. I have cut my uh, drawing and painting paper and placed it in the Friday folder, uh, I'm sorry, the flash files, uh, the filing cabinets in front of our school. So if you come up uh, to our school and you're looking at all of those filing cabinets, the drawing, the drawing paper will be in the filing cabinet on the right and it's the very bottom drawer. Um, and so if you uh, uh, please take a sheet um, uh, to do your poster with. Uh, but if you get home and something happens to it or you don't want to come up and, and take a sheet from the uh, flash files, uh, you can use any draw, um, copy paper or printer paper uh, that will actually work because that's also 8.5 by 11. The artwork must be flat, so please try not to fold it or roll it or glue anything to it. I would suggest drawing with a pencil first and then outlining with an ink pen or a marker or a Sharpie. Uh, but you don't have to. You can go uh, directly to color and you can uh, use crayons, markers, color pencils, uh, so anything that you might have at home. The artwork must convey a message at a glance that persuades its viewers to take action toward good forestry practices and we'll explain that in the second video. The uh, Number seven, all posters must be turned in uh, to your teachers by November 20th. So if you can um, uh, when you finish your drawing, uh, put it back in your flash file uh, folders, return it to the flash files, it goes to your teacher. Your teachers will then uh, collect them and I will come by and pick them up from your teachers. I think it's going to be the, the easiest or simplest way to get your posters uh, to me. If you can get your posters turned in to the teachers and I collect them on November 20th, then I have a, a, a couple of days before Thanksgiving to start the uh, review and the judging process uh, and let Ms. Sism and Mr. Johnson pick out their top three and get them to the judges before December 1st. So that is our, our ultimate deadline. Uh, helpful hints that the judges have given uh, is uh, number one, let's keep it simple. Uh, make your drawing simple and uh, uh, be about our Kentucky's forest. Be creative and original. Uh, it says avoid plagiarism. That means uh, please don't copy or trace. Uh, you know, if you see an image from a magazine or a computer that you like, you can draw from that, but change it up a little bit so it's more of your image than a, a direct copy of somebody else's work. Consider an area of forestry that's important to you and your family and community. Let's draw from your personal interests and experiences. Uh, when I was your age, I spent most of my time in, uh, in the tree. I love climbing trees um, and, or, or uh, tie a rope and, uh, and, and make my own swings. Uh, I have a lot of memories of doing that. But also, um, you know, as I've gotten older, I love to, to plant trees. I love go uh, hiking in the, in the forest uh, and seeing what kind of animals and things and plant life I can find. So, you know, however you think trees are important to you uh, and your family, I think that'd be a, a good thing to draw from. Uh, think about forestry issues uh, in your community, whether you live on a farm uh, or in a subdivision or if you live in an apartment in the city block. Trees are important to all of us. They help clean our air. They uh, uh, provide a view, beautiful landscapes this time of year with all the fall leaves. Uh, so, you know, uh, think about um, how trees are sort of important to you. Investigate, read, ask questions, do your final research before you make your final poster. Now, I want to share with you um, a poster drawn by Madison Doris 
way back in 2011, many, many years ago. And uh, Madison is all grown up now. But if we look at her poster, she won first place at her school. Uh, and I wanted you to look at her poster and think about why do you think the judges chose this picture? Some of the things uh, that we usually discuss in class is uh, Madison colored the whole picture. She didn't leave any paper space showing. Uh, that white paper space, a lot of times the judges think that you just didn't finish it. So do try to uh, complete the color over the whole thing. Madison added a border. You do not have to have a frame or a border. Uh, she used a ruler to do that. Uh, you do not have to have that. This could be artwork all the way out to the edge. I've had students win with frames. I've had students win without the little frames. Uh, the message needs to be on uh, your uh, the front cover somewhere, and I'd make it nice and readable, uh, nice and clear. Uh, when Madison drew her uh, poster, it was about Kentucky's water. Water every drop counts. So that's what the poster is about. She also gave examples of how water is important to her and her family. That's a picture for dad uh, fishing. So you can't go fishing without water. Uh, you, uh, fish can't live without water. And then she's got cattails and green grass and, and an apple tree in the back. All of the plant life needs water to also survive. And animals, uh, is uh, that we have a horse in the background getting a drink. Uh, so all of these things are examples of how water is important to animals, people, and plants and uh, wildlife. So I'm hoping this will help you as you go to start your poster. So the, vi the next video is actually going to be more information about trees and forest, and hopefully you can use that information uh, before you make your final poster.